Good evening, guys, and welcome to episode 45 of Costa Rica Real Estate and Investments with me, your host, Richard Bexon. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be talking with an architect, Adriana Mora. I've actually noticed recently we've been focusing a little bit more on construction and also architects, um, just because, again, a lot of the realtors are saying that there's not tons of product out there at the moment. One thing that I did hear um, from someone that I was speaking to in the municipality in Santa Teresa was that they have a lot of people actually looking to subdivide lands at the moment. So they're looking to subdivide land to build lots to sell it, but they're very backed up in the municipality so that they think that a lot of uh, new products or new development, new land is going to become available in the next coming months as that actually comes out of the municipality. So I know a lot of people feel like that there is uh, that they don't have much time, that there's that fear of missing out. Uh, but I would say, you know, just take your time, guys, and find the right thing for you because it is here in Costa Rica. But anyway, we're going to be talking with Adriana Mora today. She's the owner and chief architect of MG Costa Rica Studio. It's a company that does architectural design, master planning, landscape architecture, and project management. They do the whole thing from helping you, I suppose, analyze the land that you're buying all the way through to the end finishing, kind of the end construction. They're based up there in Guanacaste in the North Pacific side of Costa Rica, and they're working on a variety of products. So I'm sure that uh, we'll be talking about them during the podcast as well. Remember, if you have any questions for me um, or would like any information uh, or thinking about investing here in Costa Rica, real estate, condos, vacation rentals or business, uh, I'm more than happy to help. I've had quite a few people reach out, some people even for me to actually just take a look at the contract. Uh, somebody sent me a contract the other day to take a look at for a piece of land and I told them not to sign it because they didn't have the planner uh, for the actual land and also that they hadn't uh, even got their environmental studies done yet for the actual development. So it's kind of those things that I can kind of give a few pointers on. Um, again, I'm full of useless information, as I say. You can email me info at investing costa rica.com that's in info at investing costa rica.com remember to comment away guys like it and subscribe to this channel let's get straight into it good afternoon adriana how are you how are you richard very very good i really appreciate you taking the time to join us uh, on the podcast today and i must say that's a very impressive background that you have behind you lots of palm trees oh well the this is my view every morning, every afternoon, and well, the, in the night we didn't see anything, but it's beautiful. So <laughs> awesome. Beautiful. So you guys are in Hacienda Pinilla, which for people that don't know is a community up there with various different, um, I suppose, condominiums or res residential areas in. The JW Married is, always, is, is there as well. It's a very large, actually, I don't even know how many hectares or acres it is, but I know it's very, very large. Um, just south of Tamarindo, I know that you're inside that has in Apania. You've been up there for a while. Um, I know your brother-in-law, Derek, I work with him, hence why you and I are talking right now. Um, but I mean, I'm sure it's been a bit of a crazy, a bit of a crazy year. And you and I were just chatting about some of the construction that's happening up there and the tons of trucks going backwards and forwards in Hacienda Pania. But what have you seen? What things have been, you know, what things have been different? What surprised you? Um, you know, I mean, it's been a bit of a crazy year, but I mean, what's been interesting and what's been, what surprised you recently? Well, um, yes, I, I have been here for a year, but uh, what surprised me the most is uh, that uh, almost like six months ago, uh, the increasing of, of, uh, of wagons and trucks with materials. Wow. Uh, it's been a lot. So for me, it only means one thing. We have a lot of constructions. So uh, that is not only good for my profession and it's for the uh, country's economy, for everyone. So I'm, I, I'm very glad to see uh, trucks passing the street every day. You can hear it right now. Wow. Um, so, I mean, Adriana, what was it like in 2017, 2018 compared to where we are now in 2021? I mean, what percentage increase would you say that there is in construction? More than double because I, I say my mother is here in my house and he said, what is going on? Every day we have a lot of trucks in the streets, you know, that here we, we have a, a lot of nature and this, but we are really surprised. So I think that maybe 
doing a, a little calculation, we have uh, these 30 constructions in here, wow. residential construction. Yeah. So it's, 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 I don't know, it's, it's bastante, it's wow. enough. Well, but, but the other thing that we are seeing is that number of families that wants to, that came for one week and stay two, three, four weeks, and then, and then are months, one month, three months, and they stay temporary, but they want to stay living here. Yep. It works, they permit it. So, but a lot of people are trying to do in that. And what is most um, impressive is there are nationals. You mean Costa Rica? Not only foreigners. Yeah, yeah, Ticos. Yep. And, and you expect that maybe will be, I don't know, gringos or Europeans, but, but no, they are Ticos. Wow. Well, I mean, has in the Panera yeah. as always, I mean, Ticos have always, I suppose, bought property up there, um, you know, just because again, it, it used to be affordable, I'd say, Adriana, you know, I remember when lots up there were like $80,000, $100,000, um, you know, now, it's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you're not going to get anywhere near that. I mean, it's been absolutely, you know, absolutely crazy up there in Hacienda Panera. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mentioned to you that I worked with a couple over about two or three months. We looked at properties from Papagayo all the way down to Panera. Um, you know, because I know, you know, the majority of the coastline here, well, the whole of like the Pacific coastline here very, very well. And we went from Papagayo looking at properties. They ended up buying a lot in Panilla, as I said there, um, just because they made an offer on a house, it fell through. And then they were like, what do we do, Rich? And I was like, let's build, you know, they get to build exactly what it is that they want to do. So, um, but yeah, it was impressive just being in there is how much construction is just happening in Hacienda Panilla. But there's also tons of lots still to be built on, no? Yeah, yeah, this is a big place. I, I think that it's more than 4,000 square meters or something like that. It's, it's, it's absurd. Wow. The, the land is without constructions. And this is what makes this place really beautiful because we could see a lot of uh, wild animals because we have uh, and say uh, venados, uh, deers, sorbros, yeah. deers and foxes, and yeah, yeah I mean, the deer. So yep. yeah, it's, 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 it's really nice. Yeah. And I have to say that the other thing that is starting to 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 increase is the possible uh, business or new services that we are going to need. For these new people that that came to live here, because it, this this place is used to live for tourism, but it's not the same if you came here to a, one week, one one month uh, for vacational reason. That if you are living in a place, you need different products, different services. And I agree. This place need a lot of of these new uh, possible projects for me i know i all, I, I, I all, all these all these i introduce in projects for me all this will be a new project yeah. to develop i agree i mean you know the area is going to need i mean there's not a supermarket close by there aren't tons of restaurants you know there's not a there's not a bakery close by you know it's going to need a lot of that infrastructure so i, I think that that's great feedback i mean Maybe that's even one of the things that if you, you know, the questions that I asked you, if you were to invest in something, you'd be investing in, you know, some of those ancillary services that, you know, in that area. But now, if you were looking for rental returns in Costa Rica, because a lot of people do look for rental returns, where would you buy and build rentals? Well, right now, the top places for me are Tamarindo, Playa Grande, yep. Nosara y but I think the new new small places are starting to grow in all the Pacific coast. Yeah, From La Cruz, we have I, I have uh, several clients now uh, trying for, to purchase uh, uh, properties in, in La Cruz, others in South Pacific. So I think. Uh, 
that we will be surprised with other places. Yep, I agree, I agree. R random question, because I often sometimes see it. What is master planning? Like, what is master planning? I see it a lot. What is master planning? Who would use it? And like, what's its benefit? Okay, uh, uh, for us, uh, well, no matter the size or the scale or the complexity of a project, it could be very little or very big. Uh, the master plan will be developed, uh, developed for, for our team as a result of a strategic uh, planning is, is like the materialization or the artistic translation of your business plan. It's, it's, it's like the most important tool for us uh, to potentiate the economic investment over the time. We, we think in flexible projects we, that work uh, today, tomorrow, and over the time. Uh, the, the master plans allow us to organize, transform, uh, improve uh, all the design uh, 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 elements in, in your property. So in order to get the best performance of it. So we get the best of the whole lot of property and then you can, say I'm going to build it or, or do the construction in, in different uh, phases or, or, or years or okay. whatever you want, but. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. I understand it now. Basically kind of master planning is the overall like strategic plan for whatever it is you're doing, but you may do it in phases. Is that correct? Yeah, you don't have to do it, but, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, with this, we also work uh, with a, a general budget, a scope, and um, uh, of your investment and distribute it uh, uh, during the time we make with the master plan that you have a successful project. Okay, so it sounds like it's pretty important. Well, it, yeah, uh, everyone should do this no matter the project will be because we we include here uh, um, different kind of studies market uh, studies uh, financial um, feasibility so we also design what all these studies said to us depend on the results we said okay we need to do this 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 uh, quantity of these kind of uh, finishes, it, they tell us a, a lot of information for a uh, develop or, or design this, this master plan. It's very important. Okay. I mean, for anyone that's looking to consider to build here in Costa Rica, to construct here in Costa Rica, what do you think they should consider? You know, and in your opinion, I mean, what is the thing that shocks most people about here? Like, you know, the difference between the US and Costa Rica? Well, I, I can, I, I don't know if I can tell you the difference between Costa Rica and US, but I said the most important thing is you have to find or uh, um, a professional. You have to hire someone to know all the phases, to know all the permits, uh, because for example, we we help to 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 our clients to from the purchase of their of their properties yep. to the to the end of the construction all the way down because uh, if you buy a property anywhere this in for example you can. Uh, they can give you a, uh, or you can buy a property and doesn't, doesn't have um, uh, water availability, for example. Yep. And without water availability, you can construct anything. So it's important that you find a, 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 a someone that help you from the beginning to the end of the of your project, and you have to need you need uh, experience.
experts and professionals in architecture construction from the beginning to the end of your project. I mean, basically, it sounds like you need a great team. Yeah, you, you need a great team, a multidisciplinary team. Yep. Because, in, in, for example, our, our teams are as big as the project needs. Yep. So every project is unique, is different. Your require their requirements are a very very different. So yeah, we need a a, a very structured and 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 a, a very good team. I agree. I mean, I think basically what you're trying to say is your project or your construction project will only be as good as the team that you have on it. So you better make sure that you get a really, really good team together because, you know, I, I've seen it enough times, uh, Adriana, where, you know, they didn't have potentially have a great architect and all their vision wasn't the same between the architect and the owner. And like, you need to make sure there's that, that, you know, that they are on the same wavelength. Um, and I think, as you mentioned there about water, you know, even from the, from buying land, um, I got a client at the moment that, that's looking to buy land and, you know, it's like a, a hand dug well on the property. Um, but like the question is, is, does it have a concession? If it doesn't have a concession to get it registered, it's going to take years to do that. Um, you know, so it's all these yeah. things that, you know, it's very complicated buying land here where there is, where you don't actually have, you know, water or you don't have registered water. You know, yeah. But, yeah. We have the knowledge, the knowledge to, to, find uh, the right property for what you want yep. because it's different if you want a, a place for uh, the, your dream house or you want it for rentals or yep. it's commercial we have to know the use land for that of the if knowing the, if the uh, how the municipalidad is the expect of what you construct there and there's a lot of uh, things that could affect the, the the right way of the of the project. So yeah, you need a very good team. So there you, there you have it, guys. You better get a very very good team. Um, Adriana, how would you go about finding a good team then? Well, I said that you need a a, good, a company or a professional that had good good reference that has projects that can show you because yeah we have a lot of I, I don't know I, I, I have a lot of professionals and companies but not always doing right yep so I uh, I know it's difficult when you said this like okay hire me I, I'm the best yeah but there's also a lot of companies and professionals doing working right for you so you have to do a uh, research and i don't know try to find good reference of that company of that person because because we can we could find everything I, I think you said two very important things there which is references and see the projects that they're actually currently working on or that they've worked on so that you can actually see whether what they've done, like fits what it is that you're trying to do. Because again, while you might have talented people, if they don't have experience in what it is that you wanted to do, you may end up with something that's going to be terrible. So talking, talking about projects, Adriana, I mean, what projects are you working on at the moment? Uh, we, are, we are working now on, on a few uh, residential projects Yep. It's for single families. And also, uh, like, it's in, like in the middle, I'm the condos and residential. Uh, in, in in a few of these, we also do feasibility, market, financial, and social studies. So, depend of the results of these studies, we propose to our clients the quantity and the features of these units should need. And also, uh, we are working in a kind of master plan of project uh, like uh, haciendas or farms near to here yep. that are not a hundred percent used or developed so the client said okay what I'm, what, what can I do with this 
So we are trying to, we, we make a proposal of restoration, landscaping, uh, possible productive uh, activities. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we are working on that right now on several uh, 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 farms. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, that sounds very exciting to just figure out when someone's just got land and they're not too sure what to do with it. Like, what could you do with it? So, um, you know, whether that's tourism projects, as you said there, reforestation, or whether there's another way to bring, you know, the, I suppose to get cash flow out of the land one way or another. But let's let's quickly jump on to the cost of building here, if you don't mind me asking, because this is always one that I get asked here. And I know that there is there's a wide range here. But I mean, if someone's looking to build, say, look something luxury, they're building to look, look like a very nice luxury home. How much would they be looking at like per square meter or square foot for a luxury home here in Costa Rica? I, I, I would say that for luxury, uh, 1,300 per okay. square meter will, will be starting at the, uh, at this um, amount because uh, the highest um, cost uh, or impact on this cost for us is well, what we try is uh, is on finishes and yep. subcontract yeah because we need that your money uh, we'll see you can you can see it but that Yep. We, if we know the area and the construction costs, so we, we can avoid uh, unnecessary hidden costs, what we call hidden costs, for example, foundation, pipe. So we try to our projects that you see that a lot of this uh, amount is for finishes and subcontractors. Yep. So, I mean, $1,300 a square meter is probably round about $110 a square foot, give or take, somewhere around there, maybe a little bit more. Um, you know, it's usually, I think that's probably, you know, from what I've spoken to people, probably I would say towards the low end of luxury. I mean, we've seen stuff up to $200 a square foot, you know, which would be around about $2,500 a square meter. But I mean, I think at $2,500 a square meter, you're talking really, really high end, very high, you know, um, you know, fixtures and fittings, probably imported from outside of Costa Rica at that price. So, um, but I mean, it's yeah. good to know because people sometimes ask me, hey, Rich, how much is construction here a square foot? And I say, you know, anywhere from a hundred dollars, you know, up, you know, uh, per square foot, because in the States, of course, they do stuff with square feet. I'm getting used to the, the calculation from square meters to square feet. I'm still trying to get used to it, but um, and I think it's great that you mentioned there that the, what has the biggest impact on this is the finishings, um, you know, because that's the stuff that you see, but it's also is, you know, a lot of, where a lot of the cost is as well. So I think that that's, that's really, that's really, really important. If you inherited $500,000, so you inherited it and had to invest in a business or real estate in Costa Rica, what would you do with it and why? I would invest that money in research. I do demographic population and I don't know a research project that will help uh, will help us to decide which project in the short, medium, and long terms. Um, what are the that help us uh, define what are the services and products that can be developed to the demands generated because. Yep of the increase of tourism and also by the new population that is living here. So yeah, I invest the money in studies to classify the possible projects. I think, I think that's really important, Adrian. I think using data is a very good response to how to basically identify what it is that you, uh, you know, what business or real estate to invest into. I mean, I still think it's very interesting, Adriana, what you said there, that again, in the Hacienda Panilla, Avianas area, you're seeing huge development. And there really isn't that much infrastructure with regards to, you know, um, pharmacies, um, you know, um, bakeries, uh, restaurants, supermarkets. I mean, I think the nearest supermarket to Hacienda Panilla is quite far away, no? 
Yeah, we have kind of a supermarket inside, but I, I, I don't know how to say it, but I, I can get used to to the to the schedule here. Yep. You go and they always are closed. Not all, not all, not. The restaurants are closed every day, uh, Monday to the, you, you, you really didn't know where to, where or when go to eat to yep. the supermarket because it's very random <laughs> the way that business work in here. And we are used to other things because we came from central area. So yep. for me, it's frustrating to see how they can do better with their little or bigger or big business. So yeah, we need a lot of stuff. For example, I don't know, I'm gonna tell you two. I, I don't, I, I can see anywhere at dry cleaning. Um, yep. Also, well, with these roads, we need to wash our cars every day almost. <laughs> and, and, and we don't have, um, I think right now there's one people that is offering a, 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 like a lava car, yep. a, but you are talking uh, or only of supermarkets or essential services like pharmacy, but we have those services, but there's a lot of services like, I don't know, a jewelry we didn't have here because if I have to take my watch we have to go to Santa Cruz Oliveria. I, I think that you make a, a great point there, Adrian. I think there is a lot of opportunity, especially in developing beach towns for these ancillary services that you mentioned there. So, well, Adriana, I know um, that you're busy. I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us here. Anyone that wants to contact Adriana and her team, again, she does the whole thing from, you know, advising on land all the way through to the finished product of construction. Uh, you can contact her. I will put all of your contact details, Adriana, in the description. Um, and I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks to you, Richard. I'm very, very grateful for your invitation. And I hope uh, that this will be useful for for the people that is hearing us. I'm, I'm sure it will be. Well, you have a good evening, Adriana. And again, thank you very much. Thank you very much to you. Okay, bye.